Welcome back, everybody. This is season two, episode one, and we are back with a very special guest. We got the one, the only, Miss Morgan Newton. Morgan, how's it going? I love that intro. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Look, I, I made sure I rolled out the red carpet for you, you know, just because. Oh, so you know, sweet. So kind. I, I know, you know, you, we, we got you on YouTube nowadays, so um it's because it's gonna be a little bit different than the last go around yes i can see your face everyone can see our faces you know and and, and people should see our face you know we're cute i, I think i think we look all right you know <laughs> you, you you taking all of my shine right here but <laughs> yeah. oh man but i don't first off it's really good to have you back thank oh, you good to be for... back absolutely it is really good to have you back and i don't know if anybody's had a more eventful start to the year than you mm -hmm. which is super cool you know and and i'm not even gonna waste time we can jump right into it about a month ago from today you started your first full-length exhibition when i think of home yesterday mm -hmm. as of this recording so um February 3rd marked the conclusion of February 4th. Uh, February 4th. No, today's February 4th. Today's February 5th, honey. You're lying. I'm telling you the truth. Isn't that some shit? <laughs> February 4th <laughs> marked the end of your showing. Talk mm -hmm. to me about this entire experience for you and how you felt um the entire experience was really it feels surreal well it felt surreal because even like getting the show was kind of like a crazy experience a lot of people what i did is i was i wasn't angry i was like frustrated because i wanted to have my own show since i was like 15 or 14 and i was frustrated because i was like i want to do this and I want to have, you know, something to put together. I want to put together a body of work. I don't know how. Um, a lot of people I know are in galleries, but I want to figure out how to do that too. So one day I was like, what if I just made a whole document about my own show, what I want it to be, write down who's going to be there, what I'm aware of, pick my outfits out, and then put it together, and then send the document of my proposal to galleries around Houston and see if they're interested which is rare like you can't shop a show around like it's a tv show like there's different like relationships that have to be had with different galleries and stuff so i was like i don't know if it works it works if it doesn't oh well so i sent it to community artist collective and literally the next day they were like oh let's have a meeting we'd love to talk to you and i was just like oh my gosh and then when I got there, I was just like, well, let me not, you know, get too crazy and think that they're going to give me a show. So I had a uh, meeting with Kylie, who was the curator at the time, and their two interns, um, Alex, Alexa, Alexis, and Cassie. And um, I read them my proposal, and Kylie was like, oh, so when can we do it? And I was like, what are you talking about, girl? And she's like, we're going to put you on the calendar for next year. And I was like, are you serious? And this is like May. January is nowhere in my mind. It's May. And I'm just like, okay, I guess I have my own show. And I was just like, I'm so powerful. I <laughs> it's funny how that all works, right? Mm -hmm. Man, so you had a long runway from May to January for the start of it. And mm -hmm. and, and you kind of touched on it. This was your first full length you know, exhibition. So previously for people that have seen your work have been able to experience your work in person um it has been a ton of you know stuff that's happened at howard you know presentations that have happened at howard where you can't present all of your work at the same time maybe it's two to three pieces mm -hmm. max am i right there yeah you know so everybody hasn't been able to get a full length morgan newton experience so to see people that first day that you were able to present it, interact and engage in an experience exclusively curated by you, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel? What was that to see that experience? At first I was like, 
really excited, really like I was telling you, I was, I thought I wasn't nervous, but apparently my body thought otherwise that I was nervous. So it was just really nice to see like people I invited um, interact with my work. I remember saying in my speech, like I invited people I hadn't spoken to in years, people I hadn't seen in years. And they were like, oh, for sure, I'll be there. I was just like, stop lying. And even seeing like my family, cause they didn't know like, oh, the show is about us. I feel like my like, mom and my dad had like maybe I guess some not suspicions but like they kind of knew it was like family centered but they didn't know like how it was gonna put everything together how it was gonna um connect everything together and for you personally how did it feel because I'm thinking in my mind you're going through these things you're going through these pieces one at a time you mm -hmm. yourself, you've only seen these things two to three at a time in person. For you, I'm sure you had a moment when setting everything up where it was just you and just a select group of people before people started roaming in. Mm -hmm. And you got to immerse yourself in oh, yeah, your cried. own world, <laughs> curated by you. Mm -hmm. I want to know more importantly, how did that feel for you? It was like the day before the show. Everything was set up. Tamira, the exhibition coordinator, was there. Shout out to Tamira. She's been so sweet. She's so helpful. I love her so much. Um, she put everything up. And that was like the first time I saw it all like in the room with the video and the pictures. And I was just like, it looks so nice. I, I cried. I crowed. I crew. <laughs> But I was just like, wow, like it's all coming together and everybody's going to see it. It's different to, I guess, prepare for it leading up to it. And then to see it like in person in its entirety, because leading up to it, I definitely have moments of like, oh, I'm nervous to show my art. People are going to see all this stuff. I don't know. Not that I was scared that they weren't going to like it, just nervous to like open myself up to basically everyone that I invited. And I had moments where I was just like, I don't really want to do it anymore. Like I knew I was going to do it, but I was just like, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to, you know? Those, those little little creeps of doubt mm -hmm. you know, coming in, you know mm -hmm. but yeah I, I think we all at some point have to learn how to overcome that and I think you've been doing that for such a long time so I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that wasn't a, a new feeling for you no. just another just another one of those feelings that you had to overcome which you did and it led to just a beautiful moment and a beautiful experience I I'll touch a little bit about how I viewed it just being in there, but I want to hear it from your words first. You. When I think of home, explain it to me. So it's based on um, the rendition from The Wiz, a movie you still haven't seen. It was based on <laughs> Diana Ross and Stephanie Mills rendition of home. I'll break it down for you since you haven't seen it. So at the end of the movie, Diana Ross, she's gone through all these trials and tribulations, you know, learning about herself, growing. And then she sings um, Home. And it's about like her life, her family, herself. And it's like a beautiful moment. And then at the end of the movie, she like comes back home after, you know, being with the lion, the tin man, and the scarecrow. <laughs> and so. I really enjoyed that movie as a kid. I love the imagery in the movie. I love the scenes of like having the fantasy worlds or like the scenes of having like the Afrofuturism, um, futuristic, like, I guess, hints and pieces to it. So I decided to put that in my work. I feel like it was already there, like the surrealism, like the grand themes, but I really wanted to kind of like play that into my recent work with the show. So that's why you see like a whole bunch of black women in like different worlds, different lands, different like scenes, cause it's, um, you know, inspired by that. And then it's about me making a home within myself as a black woman, but then giving gratitude to my family that shown me what home is throughout the years through not only my eyes, but also like their perspective as well. So. And, and I think that's what I wanted to touch on too. Well, first off, I should not have told you 
that <laughs> I haven't seen the Wiz. Um, and you know what? That's actually nasty work on your part because we were just talking about that maybe like 10 minutes before getting on here. And here you go. <laughs> it's not and nasty here you go, it. blurred it out again. You still have time to see it. That's me I'm bullying sure. you into watching it. Maybe we can watch I'm it fine. together when you come back. Maybe, maybe we can't watch it together. What's it on? Is it on Netflix? What's it on? I don't know. It's always on like random TV, like okay. randomly. It might be on like on demand somewhere. If not, we will rent it. It's we'll, probably we'll like it. three three ninety nine to rent. Okay, that's not a problem. I will take you up on that offer in due time. But that is what I wanted to talk about when discussing home because for me, when I walked in it, I kind of had like the realization where it was almost as if. I was in two different places at once. Mm -hmm. It felt like I was in your mind, but it also felt like I was in your living room. It also felt like I was in your backyard. And it, it kind of felt like it was marrying your external home with your internal home being your mind. And I kind of got that confirmation from you just based off of the show notes and you have a quote here saying i'm interested in the conceptual action of creating a home within myself while expressing gratitude to my family and their history that has shown me what home is mm -hmm. we talked a lot about your process to getting to this point now in our previous episode if you haven't listened to it everybody please go listen to it it is on apple spotify and google <laughs> um quick plug there shameless plug there but we talked a lot about that process for you getting to where you are now and the self-acceptance of you where did you get the idea the realization of developing your internal home based off of the blueprint that's been laid out to you from your external home? Where did where did that realization come from for you? Um, I think it was like when I definitely started painting, um, like at Howard as a Howard student, just trying to figure out my own style, my own like, um, I guess my own, yeah, my own style basically, or like, what sets me apart from my other classmates? What do I paint that people can look at and be like, oh, Morgan painted that? You know, trying to figure out the theme of my work. I feel like a lot of my um, classmates, we develop the theme of our work like over time, like this is what we focus on. This is what, you know, we like to portray. This is what we like to convey. Um, I think it started at Howard definitely. And then senior year, that's when I like started trying to figure out how can I go into this deeper and, you know, document my journey as a young black woman. And I started to do that like a little bit in 2020, but like as time progressed, I was like, okay, this is what I want my work to be about. And while I was doing that, I think I told you I was sitting on like all these family photos and videos. And at first I thought I wanted to do a documentary, but I was just like, um, I just didn't know where to start, didn't know where, what I was gonna do. So I kept these pictures for a long time. And then I was thinking one day, like, why don't I put these two things together? Because I feel like it's very cohesive and it matches, you know, my practice of what I'm doing today. And I was just like, somebody has to see these videos. Like, they're so beautiful. Like somebody has to see them. It can't just be me. And that's when I wrote the proposal and put it all together. And when I think of home came to life. <laughs> so, and that actually segues pretty well into my next question, because we have the concept down now. We have your two previous installments, um, Come to My Garden and Freedom of Being. Mm -hmm. All of those have already been done at this point, I'd imagine, um, if I have my timeline right. You do. All right, cool. <laughs> Those remaining pieces, because I think there were three to four more at that point that weren't developed at that time. Mm -hmm. You have the idea, you have the thesis laid out for what you want. You have the proposal sent out. You have the idea of the video in mind. You have all these components pretty much 
what's left are those remaining pieces. What was kind of your objective when it came to rounding out this story for you with the remaining pieces of work that you had to create prior to the show? I think it's like the freedom of being is like me coming into myself, um, coming to my garden is like me also <laughs> appreciating who I am with like nods to like music albums that are familiar with like my upbringing. And then the rest of the new paintings are kind of like, they were pieced with the photo collage and the video of my family because I wanted to talk about like spirituality, home, community, um, ancestors, things like that. And I feel like to have them like sectioned off like that feels like phase one, phase two and phase three. It makes it more like cohesive and puts it all together. But the new paintings are definitely like, what can I say or like, how can I, I guess, symbolize like home or like symbolize how I view home to me or like how I view community, how I view, you know, does that make sense? Absolutely. And can we talk about the ancestors a little bit more? Because yeah. it have been, <laughs> you know, it have been easy to take the family that you see for face value mm -hmm. and incorporate them into the story. Mm -hmm. They can get a step further in history and lineage by including them. What made you want to include them? in it and how do you think that helped told the overall story that you were going for um so for people that weren't there i put an altar together of my grandpa my um, grandmother on my, my dad's side and then my great grandma on my mom's side so i was talking about this at the artist talk how i like i feel like they're always with me and um i have like very fond memories of them growing up and so i was like well i knew they were gonna be here but I wanted them to be like in this space here, um, just to give them their shine, you know, just to have them a part of something so beautiful since physically, you know, they're not here with us at the moment. And then I also wanted the paintings to reflect that to, I guess, ancestors that, you know, I don't know, or I don't know their names, I don't know their stories. So I wanted to know, like, I was thinking of like, what are their hopes and dreams? Like what, who are they? What have they gone through? Or just to think like, I guess, I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to say. Because I, I think for me, when, when I look at it, and I think it's pretty beautiful going from freedom of being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is freedom of being all the way to these latest pieces of work to finish it out. And we go from that self-acceptance into these newer pieces that are like, we go from coming into our own, come into accepting of our, accepting our own into this level of being grounded in who you are, mm -hmm. you know, grounded in where you come from. And it almost feels like a reaffirmation of everything that you drew out in the past you know i am powerful i can grow um i can do all of these things and it, it almost served as like this this sense of i don't know if alignment is the right word but i i think guidance is 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 another word for it too where it's just like maybe if i'm thrown a little bit off track i'm not going to get lost you know, because I have this sense of who I am. I have this sense now of where I come from mm -hmm. and my power comes from that. That's what it felt like. And it was very beautiful to see that. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Not a problem. Not a problem. So can we talk about the video again, just a little bit more? Because you're right. We did you've had this in mind for a long time now. I yeah. feel like I remember years ago. That's you true. You to me, you know, wanting to do this. Yeah. I said, it, 
Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I said I was sitting on those pictures in like 2020, but in reality, I had them um, 2018. That's when I first started like collecting pictures. And I was just like, I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. Because at first I thought I was like, well, maybe I'll just put a regular you know, photo collage together. But I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I just sat on them for years. And then. So what's the added emotion that that project came out to be when putting it into this context with it being your first show and mm -hmm. it being powerful pieces of work that mean a lot to you? Um, when it comes to, you know, incorporating your family into this story, like what added emotions did that video and the ultimate production of it have to this entire body of work that you were able to put out? I feel like I said it before, but I cried. I, <laughs> the video was the first thing I finished, like, of the show. Like, I had, like, a few paintings I knew I was going to put in that I did in the past, but... The first like real thing that I put in was the video. Um, and I had already like digitized the videos and put it on my computer, but to put it all together, I was like, I know I wanna do something. A lot of people don't know the background and the video is filmed outside of my um, grandmother's house in Bryan, Texas. It was like July, 2020 and the sunset was so beautiful. And I was like, I'll record this one day I'll need it. And it felt so right to just put that, you know, in the background of the collage of videos. But I feel like the emotion I had behind it was just like, I guess, excitement, but like extreme gratitude. Because just, I feel like when we live life, we just go through living life, you know, having these moments. But it's very rare that we get to replay it back on video and see it reflected back to us and you know oh that's what I was doing back then or look at so and so back then and I'm really gl glad that my dad um recorded all those videos because he always had a camera with him and even my grandma his mom she's very like she was very um I guess interested in keeping things like she has a lot of pictures photo albums she'll keep like letters that um, other grandkids have given her over the years and they're all just like in this big bin and she just kept everything you know memories are important to me I'm always forcing people to take pictures forcing people to record and stuff like because I'm really big on that and and it's difficult I think in the moment maybe to <laughs> understand the importance that yeah. comes from documenting all of these things and mm -hmm. I have a hard time at a of, of doing it myself, whether it be taking pictures of myself, taking pictures of other people. But when you see pieces of work, like what you were able to present dating all the way back to way back when to this is what I think is said in the notes dating back to 94. Yeah. That, that's what I thought all the way through yeah. these years. It goes to show just how important these things can be. You never know, you know, so that's what made it so beautiful and i think when we when we think about the art that you were able to present when you think about the video production that was tied along to it this overall concept of creating an internal home based off of the home that you've always known in the external when you complete a project like this what does it do for you in terms of next steps of maintaining a home, right? Where we go from understanding <laughs> and, you know, connecting the two together and, and how they each play a part in your everyday life. How does, what added level of detail for you does it um, bring to you when you go through everyday life now and you take care, you take extra care of your family, you know, because that's tied to your home base internally and it's tied to your work, you know, and taking care of yourself internally because it's tied to the external, if that makes sense. I think it was very healing to create this show 
and just to like have it come to life and be on display for like almost a month was really healing or just I had a guest book at the show and people could write like little positive affirmations in it. And I just picked it up yesterday and I read all of them. But did you read one? I did read yours. I did read yours. <laughs> I, I was reading like the most recent ones that people left and people were saying like, oh, you know, I was feeling low today and this is what I needed. Your vulnerability is so like appreciated. This is so inspiring. Um, I really love the work. Like, I was just like, wow. I didn't expect all of that. Like it surprised me. And I feel like to continue the practice after this exhibition is probably really crucial to my healing and my growth as a person. So I feel like ways that I need to, I guess, not forget that or just remember that is learning to, I guess, take my time with things, be more patient with myself and with others <laughs> and just expressing more gratitude for the things that I have and that I'm lucky to experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just have one final question for you and we can go ahead and wrap this thing up. So when we talk about all of this, I remember our first conversation with mm -hmm. each other, not our first conversation, but our first interview with each other. And you basically touched on how your art is a reflection of the times in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. So for the next time an art show rolls around and we're we're just wrapping up the first one, right? So I'm not gonna sit here and ask, mm -hmm. oh, what's the next one gonna be about? Because uh, who knows, right? Who knows if you yeah. if you thought about that? But with that in mind, of it being your art being a reflection of the times, this ne this next go around when we see Morgan Newton in her first solo and her second solo exhibition. Now at that point, based off of the work that you've done now, where do you hope? that this story progresses to? Ooh, that's a great question. And you know what? A lot of people have been asking me, so what's next? When's your next one? And I'm just like, y'all, I'm so tight. <laughs> I want to take a nap for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> because I really, I really wanted so badly to be like, oh, what's the next one going to be about? Well, right now, no, it's not, I'm like, it's almost not fair. It's just like, she mm -hmm. probably hadn't even sat down for 24 hours you know in, in order to really like reflect on mm -hmm. what she's been able to do just from this past month so i'm gonna say hope hope goes to um i have ideas already but i feel like whenever i talk to you about it, it takes a long time for me to fully develop an idea to for me to be like sure oh this is what i want to do this is how i want to you know put this out and present this. Um, I was thinking, this is an idea. I was thinking of expanding on the family aspect of the show and doing like an archive of just like my family over the years and expanding like with the videos and stuff. But I didn't know if I wanted it to be like a community archive where I set up an email and have people send like pictures of their family. And it's like a big show. And then I transformed the space into like someone's grandma's house. Like I got the covered uh, couches with the plastic on them, coffee table, <laughs> coffee table, photo album, stuff like that. I was talking to Tamira about it yesterday and I was just like, you know how when artists put out an album and they'd be like, well, this era is over. It's time for the next era. Like, I feel like that's me when I plan shows like we we're in the freedom of being era and now we're in the when I think of home era and now next week, I don't know what era we'll be in, you know? Yeah. And she was like, you could still have paintings in there, but I was just like, you're absolutely right. But for me to plan something, I have to see it in my head. Like, what am I actually gonna paint? I have to, I can't just go up to the canvas and be like, I'm just gonna paint. I just, I've tried, but I just can't. So I feel like I would have to really sit and think about what I want to, do and we're gonna let you do that <laughs> and i know whenever that ends up coming out that'll be a did you like that thing. idea though i love that idea i love <laughs> the plastic sofa more than anything else 
I'm here for that. I'm here for all of that. <laughs> I, I'm I'm never mad at going back to grandma's house. You know, so I'm I'm a hundred percent down with that. It sounds beautiful, and I know anything that you're gonna do is gonna be great. Um, we are so proud of you. I'm so oh, proud of you. Yeah, that was an incredible presentation that you were able to put together with all of this time. Um, and just to going back from the first episode that was aired on this show with mm -hmm. you and I, and circling it back to this one i don't want to say it's a night and day difference but it's just beautiful to hear the growth that's been able to happen in oh, this thing absolutely you know <laughs> so very happy for you very excited for what's to come any parting words before we get out of here <laughs> I have parting words. I want to say thank you so much for interviewing me again. You're my biggest fan. Love you so much. I'm glad you recognize that. I know you're going to do it for me every time. And you showed up with my favorite wine at the show. I said, uh, you know how to treat a girl. You know how to treat a lady. I know how to get them. <laughs> I know how to get them. That was the least I could do. But that was the so least much. I could do. And, and you know, I'm always here for you. So Yes, you were yeah. at my shows as like when we were freshmen at Howard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still gonna be there. When I'm when I'm in a cane and 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 I'm just rolling around <laughs> here not knowing where I am, I'm I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. You know, that's that's just yes, you now. Know. Yeah, I know. You look you stuck with me. Oh my <laughs> it's God. Just, like, it's just, <laughs> just regardless, you know, so absolutely man it was it, it was it was great to be there it was great to see everybody engaged with your work interacting with your work smiling because of your work it was mm -hmm. such a beautiful scene and yeah. i can't wait for people who haven't experienced your work in person to get the chance to do that and i mm -hmm. can't wait to experience it again why to have something else to say okay what which is so crazy i'll wrap it up it'll be so fast there was this girl that came in on the last day and she was like oh i saw this event on eventbrite and i had to come like i got that from a lot of people like oh i saw this on eventbrite and i had to come the picture that they posted on there was so beautiful so i had to see the work this is so amazing and i was like i came to see me yeah. and i just wanted <laughs> to be there when they were there and i was just like Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. It did it feel weird? Does it feel weird when, like, when, when you hear when you hear people say that? Just like oh, I, was, I, I saw this like on a little random random like event, right? And I was like, I'm pull up. No, you know, like these so unexpected like, figures. Yeah, like oh my gosh, you thought of me. That's so kind. Yeah. Um, I love sneaking up on them, and being like, "Hi, I'm the artist." <laughs> That's what I was doing. I am the artist. Oh my God. It's me. <laughs> it's good. Oh my goodness. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. It was I like one of those videos where people yep. pop in behind the background, behind the behind them. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's, it was me this entire time. <laughs> It that's actually nice. hilarious it felt nice to know that like there are people like that i didn't even know that were um really looking to support me and then just it made me feel warm and sad i know and i and i and i got that sense just off of the first day yeah we were all there for the first day right yeah no it was the yeah. opening and you you mentioned all these people that you haven't seen in years heard mm -hmm. from in years it's probably pretty what's the word that i'm looking for uh, i guess for lack of a better phrase it's pretty nice to know or maybe surprising in a way just how much love you know you can receive just from doing what you love yeah. you know and 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 enjoying it and all of those people that you were able to touch even in the slightest over these last yeah. 10, 15 years, let's say, or however long, you know, you've known people that they thought that much about you and thought that much about the interactions that you've had with them to say, I'm coming. 
Yeah. No questions asked. I have a thing about, you know, I have a thing about being forgotten or like I will like time will pass and I'll be like, oh, they probably don't even remember me. They probably, but you know, I never forget people. I remember a lot of stuff about a lot of people. So I guess it's kind of silly to think that I wouldn't receive that back or silly to think that, oh, it's surprising, but it's just like. Because because I I feel like we always hear like, you'll never forget how somebody made you feel. Right. And that's, we know that to be the case. We can sit here and just throw around random people. It's like, oh, this person made me feel like shit. Oh, this person mm-hmm. made me feel like these shit. Either way it goes, anything in between. But the actions that come out of those feelings, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. In, in, in my opinion. And, and I feel like I sat there that first show, that opening, and I was like, this is this may just be like a little bit surprising in a way or and i can't even come up with a better word for it right now that you know all of these people over these years acted on how you made them feel Mm -hmm. by putting it back out there to you for that moment for a moment that meant so much to you that to me was a really beautiful thing yeah same same you know, so I think about that a lot. Say again. I think about that a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. That and, and it kind of it dawned on me then. It dawned on me when you know when working on this whole um, and prepping for this interview. I was like, man, oh, that was actually a really beautiful, you know, realization that people can remember how you made them feel and then decide to act on it, even all these years later. I think it's a beautiful lesson that we can all take from, you know, as we move forward and doing all these different things that whatever it is that we'll be doing, you know, Mm -hmm. down the line, you know, like the, the way we made people feel, whether it be one interaction, five interactions, a semester, semester's worth of reactions, you know, it, it can, it can come back and it can come back, um, in a positive light, you know, when, when you want it most, or, you know, when it was, the most unexpected you know so I, I think that was pretty beautiful beautiful oh thank you